All right, let's jump into our final topic of the day. Among the many political flashpoints that will be leading up to this upcoming election, be it the presidential election or many beyond uh, the presidential one, is the whole issue of gender procedures for minors, including the use of hormones, puberty blockers, uh, and permanent mutilating surgeries, all these type of things. And there is an entire apparatus out there working to legitimize these experimental procedures that includes uh, virtually all the mainstream medical association, public education institutions, the Democratic Party from the president on down. But there are some brave voices willing to stand up to this messaging apparatus. And today I'm honored to welcome one of the most prominent of those voices, Chloe Cole, to share her story and offer her thoughts. Chloe, welcome to Washington Watch. It's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me, Tony. Well, listen, let's, uh, some of our viewers, listeners may not be aware, but uh, real quickly, share your story. So I am a, I call myself a detransitioner, meaning that I've been through the process of gender transition and I decided to go back on that decision. Um, I, w I went through the process entirely as a minor. I was 12 when I started socially transition, meaning that I chose a new name for myself, started calling myself a boy and changing the way that I presented. And then at 13 was when I started to go on the physical interventions like uh, puberty blockers and testosterone. And at 15, the summer after my sophomore year of high school had ended was when I underwent the surgery. Um, I had a double mastectomy, meaning that my breasts had been removed permanently. And I stopped transitioning about a year afterward at 16 years old when I realized that I had regretted all these interventions, that I was too young to be making decisions like this, and that by, by doing all this, I was losing parts of my adulthood before I could even call myself a woman, and that one day I wanted to be able to have kids of my own. Wow. It's an amazing story. I know one of the parts of your story, Chloe, that uh, is so powerful, and you've been candid about this, is how the professionals literally pushed you, you and your parents to transition. Tell us about that part of your story. I mean, really, they were just giving me what I, as the child, wanted rather than stopping and letting me be a kid and thinking about what it might have been that I actually needed, which was psychotherapy and just being, a, being given a chance to just grow up. And they told my parents, they expected my parents to go along with all this. They told them that it was going to be life or death for me, that I would become suicidal if I were not on these interventions. And really, well, and what it came down to was just they said emotionally that manipulated parents, my too. parents. Yes. Right. How, how did they manipulate your parents? They told them that blood was going to be on their hands, that they were either going to have a dead daughter or a living transgender son. And that they only had those two choices. No other choices were, prevent, were presented to, herself, to, to us. They never told them about the possibility that I would desist or detransition or of me regretting these, these procedures. They said that it was more likely that I, that I regret going through, through puberty than I ever would being on these interventions. It's just unbelievable how, I, I mean, so much worse than manipulation. This was, um, just evil twisting of your arms. To give only those two options to your parents is just absolutely brutal. Now let's fast forward, if we can, Chloe, uh, to the process of you making the decision to go public about this story and about this whole issue. What drove you to be a public voice? Um, I mean, when I initially detransitioned, I actually got a really aggressive response from the transgender community. And the people who had celebrated me the most through my transition, and especially when I got the surgery or went on hormones, were now turning their back on me and they were saying the cruelest things to me. And even my doctors, I wasn't getting any support from them. I wasn't getting any help as to how to go off of the hormones or any of the complications that I was having from these procedures. And it was an incredibly lonely experience, so much more difficult than, than transitioning in the first place. 
I pretty much had to figure it out all on my own. And very soon after I stopped transitioning, I started interacting in communities of other people who had gone through transition and regretted it or had been damaged by it. And while on one hand, it was kind of comforting knowing that I wasn't the only one going through this, I found it incredibly painful and terrifying that I'm not the only one who has been hurt by this, that there are many people out there, the amount of which we'll never know, who have been through the exact same experience. And I wanted to be able to advocate for, for other people, especially the other kids who have been in this situation, and to prevent it from happening ever again. Well, thank you for taking that kind of stance. Uh, and, you know, it's amazing to me how the Lord, well, it shouldn't be amazing, but how he has opened up so many doors. You have testified before Congress. You've been before many state legislatures. Uh, how has that overall experience been for you? Um, I mean, really, it's been such a roller coaster of emotions because I, I've dedicated the pretty much the past year of my of my life to this and at times it can be difficult um and it can be kind of nerve-wracking giving my testimony but it's it's so worth it just being able to to affect legislation around this to help other kids and families and to reach out to other people to help to to get the support that we all need through this Chloe, that's powerful words, what you said there in the midst of the hardships of it all, that it is so worth it. And I just want to reaffirm to you, it is so worth it. We need your voice. So many of these children are just being uh, uh, like you they're be, they're be, and, and like your parents are being twisted. Uh, arms are being twisted, so to speak, to make right. permanent decisions like this. And you, you actually con consider all this... Uh, an abuse what happened to you, don't you? That's absolutely what it is. At every, at every single level, I was, I was failed by these adults, these people who call themselves doctors, who are supposed to help my parents in raising me, in getting care. It's, it's, it's just shameful in every way. You know, there's a there's a study, a recent study, I'm sure you've seen all the studies out there, but uh, that the gender, gender procedures have tripled uh, in the last several years. And that's frightening when you think about, but it's not surprising when you see how it's being pushed on students in the schools from young ages on up. Uh, what, what all do you attribute to this uh, tripling numbers, it's increasing numbers of people transitioning. I mean, a good percentage of these, of these people and every single transgender person, if not all of them, have had some sort of comorbid issue, whether it be like a learning disorder such as ADHD or autism or like a cluster B personality disorder, depression, social anxiety, or overwhelmingly. Many of them have a history of trauma, whether it be of sexual abuse or assault or rape, or a parental or family trauma. And it's not I'm hard to see to how that might play, play into the way that a person see themselves in relation to their sex. Absolutely. I'm curious your thoughts on, on this related aspect of this whole issue, and that is, you obviously, you've spoken, and so many of us have seen you and followed you, you've testified before Congress and all these types of places, but you've also spoken at a number of school board meetings, specifically on the issue of parental rights is what I'm referring to now, because these kind of go hand in hand, and what happened to your parents as well uh, through all of this, but parental rights and the notification issue, what's your take on these efforts in schools to create some sort of barrier between parents and the children? I think it's plain perverted that these adults outside of a child's family think that they can just get in between a child and their parents and their caretaker and keep secrets from them. No adult yeah, has I, I, any right to do that. To hide thing, to hide things from a kid's parents, especially something as important as this relating to their child's mental health. 
Yeah, and you know, nobody loves these children like the parents do, right? I mean, that's right. that's uh, that's the the family. That is the nucleus of support and love and care for these children. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't know if you saw uh, Montgomery County, uh, Maryland, has just recently announced a policy, and and we're seeing this type of thing across the country. But they announced a policy that parents cannot opt their children out of the classrooms when the discussions of transgenderism and all these other sexual issues come up. The parents sued the county, but yesterday a federal judge literally ruled against the parents. How concerned are you by the indoctrination that we're seeing in schools and entertainment, so many other places? I mean, it's incredibly concerning that these schools think that they can control what the child is exposed to more than the parent. I mean, when I was, back when I was in school, when I was in middle and high school, we had like waivers for parents to sign off for sex ed, but they don't get a choice on this? Great question. Great point, I, because I grew up the same way. Uh, and it was, um, man, we've come a long, long ways and in the, in the a long ways in the wrong direction. All right, Chloe, I want you, if you will, let's take a moment and speak into the lives of our viewers, our listeners of the program right now, who perhaps have a child or a grandchild that's struggling with gender dysphoria. Uh, where, where should these parents start? What, what would have been helpful to you at that point? The best thing to do is to not intervene, to not go the path of having these children go on permanent interventions that will affect them for the rest of their lives. You ha it's important to, to speak to them directly and openly about where these feelings are coming from, what it is that makes them feel like they're not enough as their own sex, what is influencing them to think that they can just opt out of either being a boy or a girl and go the other path. And to remember to be compassionate to them, to let them know that they are loved, that they are perfect as they are, that the issue is not their body or the way that they look or were born, but the way that they see it. And to guide them through it. And also to try to remove the influence that is making them think otherwise whether it be from, from school, whether they're learning it in class, from their peers, or from the internet, and to respond accordingly. Like if, like in the case of it being from social media or the internet, you might have to take away their, their, their devices and to replace it with something else, like a sport or encouraging them to go after and develop a hobby. Or if it's coming from school, then you'll have to be more involved in your, in your child's education to see what is going on in the classroom, to look at the curriculum, and you may have to move schools, you may have to end up homeschooling them, which is not an option for every parent. And it is incredibly difficult, but I think that in the, in the very end it's worth it because that gives you full control over what your child is being exposed to and what they're taught. It really does. Chloe, we've only got about 30 seconds here left. How much of this do you think, in your case, was just attributed to puberty? That's, that's not an easy process to go through. That Most people would come through this if they just go through it. We only have right. 15 seconds. I think that was a big part of it. For me, puberty started very early and it was a, per it was a very difficult adjustment for me, but nothing that I felt was really out of the ordinary. It was just me growing up into a woman. Chloe Cole, thank you so much for your powerful voice and for going against the tide on this issue. And thank you for joining us on Washington Watch.